Tell us about the chemistry between you and Benedict. I think Mark Gatiss said that you, the, that the way he played Sherlock changed after you were cast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeding you here. Ladies and gentlemen, Martin Freeman. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Everyone here probably first met you in the office. Can you just fill us in on how you got to the point of becoming a kind of, you know, everybody's most lovable yeah. Tim? I had done a sketch show that Ricky Gervais wrote on, a sketch show called Bruiser, um, that had Mitchell and Webb in it and Olivia Coleman and Matt Holness. Um, and it was a sketch show that very few people saw, but I'd, I'd first met Ricky there and we'd liked each other. And Ricky was, a, was and is an amazing person. I've not seen him for a long time, but he, he's an amazing person in that he struck me as someone who, if he's not making you laugh at any given time, life is a waste of time. I mean, like, it's not actually worth living unless you are sort of convulsing in pain at something he's just said. Brilliant. But on the other, really infuriating if you've got ten minutes to go and a half a page to do. And you think, mate, this is your show. Deliberately corpsing me isn't going to get the day finished because I can't, I can't carry on if you're making me laugh. So it's like a sort of pathological thing for him, I think, you know. We should get to Sherlock. Tell us about the chemistry between you and Benedict. I think Mark Gatiss said that you, the, that the way he played Sherlock changed after you were cast. <laughs> I'm feeding you here. Ben is, is very, very good at his job. He's brilliantly cast in that role. Um, and we, something happened. Something, some little game of table tennis happened where we were just knocking it back and forth. It was obvious in the room... I'm not saying it was obvious it was going to be this thing, but it was obvious it, we worked well together, yeah. Mm. But I didn't... Yeah, you can't anticipate the, the reaction it's going to have. But I knew I was proud of it. And then something else which got a bit of a reaction. The Hobbit. Did you have fear taking it on? I mean, was it an easy yes? No, it wasn't an easy yes, but, but for reasons more of family than anything else, actually, just for practical reasons. It wasn't because of the... The fandom thing, it wasn't because of the legacy in literature and films. It, it genuinely wasn't that. It was, Christ, how am I going to make this work for my family? And then what about the green screen? Is that a dip, so does that sort of flexing different muscles as an actor? It is. Just, yeah, it is flexing different muscles as opposed to being something I hated. In the first film, there's a scene where all the dwarves come to Bilbo's house and, and Gandalf, right? So there's about 50,000 people in my house. And... And because we're all small, but, he, but Gandalf is taller, Ian had to be in a separate set. Me and the dwarves had each other to look at and a fake Gandalf, right? <laughs> like a, t a green tennis ball Gandalf. And Ian just had a load of fucking green tennis balls to look at <laughs> in his little grief hole. <laughs> Ian, by his own admission, found that pretty depressing, I think. Yeah. But it was beautifully choreographed. And, it, you know, and you see those scenes in the finished film and it's, it's worked, it's seamless, it's beautifully done. You know. And we're going to go into the Marvel world. How does it work when you enter that kind of Marvel universe yeah. where, I mean, how much control, how, how much is dictated about your performance, yeah. what the thing looks like? Nothing you know. felt dictated, actually, no. Between action and cut, I don't, I don't want to have gone home that day ever thinking, I wish I'd tried that. I can try everything and... and to, I want to be satisfied. You know, I mean, I want to be sated. So, and that's what I love doing on Black Panther as well. You know, we had a lot of chats about whoever it was and what, what his place in this world was, and, um, as, as Ryan did with every character. Um, but it's, it's, the same, it's the same job. It's the same relationship that you have on Nativity or whatever else. You, know? you want the audience to believe what's happening. That's the, the end. You know what I mean? that's, that's your only job, really. Thank you so much, Martin Freeman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.